emergency warning system. Mike, what's that? That's the alarm telling us to shelter in place. So where do we go? And what are we supposed to do? We better go find out. In today's environment, dangerous attacks using airborne chemical or radiological materials is a situation that we need to be prepared for. We can also be subject to nearby transportation or industrial accidents that could release dangerous chemicals into the air. What do you need to do? Where should you go? How do you protect yourselves? It's everybody's responsibility to be ready to act for your own safety and others when these threats occur. Hello, I'm Sam Phillips, and I'm going to make sure you are ready to handle this type of threat by getting you the answers you need to these three questions. First, how do I choose a shelter room? Second, how do I build a shelter kit? And third, how do I seal up the shelter room from dangerous gases? Okay, let's get started. These are the factors to take into account when choosing a good shelter location. One, choose an interior room if possible because it gives you layers of protection. Two, should you choose a basement? For a tornado, yes, but for airborne dangerous chemicals, no. Many gases are heavier than air and will settle into low areas. The first floor is fine if you do a good job sealing your shelter room. Three, count the doors and windows. Choose a room with as few access points as possible. It will be easier and faster to prepare the room to be airtight. Four, are the vents accessible and can they be turned off and easily covered? Five, is the room large enough to hold your people? The issue here is the amount of oxygen that will be available. The rule of thumb is 10 square feet per person will provide enough oxygen for up to five hours for a room with a normal ceiling height. Here's an example. The room you are considering is 20 by 10 feet. That equals 200 square feet. 200 divided by 10 equals 20. So the room can accommodate up to 20 people for up to five hours. Note. Most shelter-in-place situations will last only two to three hours. The last consideration in choosing a room is the ability to shut off the ventilation system. You must turn off the HVAC to your shelter space because it will draw in contaminated air from outside. The best way to do it is to turn off power to the HVAC unit at a panel. If you cannot do that, then simply adjust the thermostat so it turns off the HVAC unit. That means you turn the thermostat to off and also turn the temperature adjustment down in the winter and turn it up in the summer. With the best room chosen to shelter in, you need to build a kit of supplies to turn the room into an airtight barrier from the toxic chemical attack. First, we have two to four mil plastic sheeting. You need enough to cover doors, windows, and vents using four inch overlap margins. It's highly recommended that you pre-measure, pre-cut, and mark the plastic pieces. Second, scissors. This is a valuable tool to cut the plastic and duct tape. Third, duct tape. Enough to seal the edges of the plastic sheeting covering the doors, windows, and vents. Next, a ladder. If you have high vents or windows, the ladder will get you up high enough to use the tape. A compact and easy to carry two-step ladder might meet your needs, but if you have a tall ceiling, you will need a taller ladder. Drinking water. Unless you choose a room with safe running water, like our bathroom example, water will keep you from dehydrating. A smartphone or cell phone. Communication capabilities are very important in these crisis situations. Flashlight and batteries. Power to your building and room could be affected in such attacks. Be prepared. AM FM radio. Consider either a battery powered or self-generated radio. Some self-generated sets come with built-in flashlight and ports to charge your cell phones. Don't overlook the need for a first aid kit. They can be invaluable. Rubber gloves and plastic garbage bags. When people want to enter the room, yet are suspected of contamination, 
the gloves and garbage bags will help contain and dispose of their clothing articles. When the all clear signal is made, the contaminated plastic sheeting and duct tape also need to be safely disposed. So, having a couple blankets or coveralls to change into is a good idea. With all these considerations to take into account, you can see why we chose a bathroom to shelter in. It has running water, typically fewer and easier to reach windows, vents, and doors, and the obvious bonus of the bathroom's primary function. It's a highly practical place to choose in airborne toxic attack situations. All clear. Resume normal operation. The base will send an all clear message using the mass communication system to let you know when it is safe clear. to come out of the shelter. All clear. If you're sheltering at home, wait for an all clear from local authorities to be broadcast over TV or radio. Be careful when coming out of the shelter. Using rubber gloves from your kit, carefully roll up the plastic sheeting in a way that covers up any dangerous materials that might have stuck to the exposed side of the plastic. And place the rolled up plastic in the trash bags from your kit. Thank you for viewing this and taking the responsibility to be ready for a dangerous airborne toxic disaster or attack on our installation and your facilities. Also remember that these techniques work at home and you should also prepare a kit for your house and family. Together, we can prepare for these hazardous situations.